our way to a hospital. We got uh, Anderson with us. We're on our way to a hospital. That's not getting any supplies. We get the trucks to get the supplies out of the hospital, but we can't get clearance to get it out. Man, how you doing? I would like to get a document from you if you have a chance. I don't have any documents on me. We'll make sure you see a doctor in a little bit, alright? Alright. But you don't look like mid one though. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at the hospital now? Yeah. <laughs> Eight days into this, nice. you guys are still and that woman is dying by the So we're doing it so far. So just, yeah. I'm just looking yeah. and, you know, forcing, like, making stuff happen, you know? And now I got the most important stuff, and I, I don't even have a cannula or a non breeder you know, anything that I could use. So we're doing this all the time. Yeah, all the time. I am doing okay. IVs. I saw, like, 30 IVs already. Now I have no gauge to put the IVs. Look at yes. that. Yes, so then I can't, I, I don't know what happened. If yeah. patient will have infection, I'm Dr. Moore. If patient have infection, a heart surgery amputation last week. I came to change. First time, they changed in after since Friday. Not getting the wound. I tried to open the wound, gonna do best size department. The patient had five seizures within two hours. We, we took us 30 minutes to have out of hand. And it took us an hour. An hour. She thinks that she's stabilized. We don't have enough supply. Tell you, you just have a below the knee amputation or hand amputation. The first day we came there to be here at three o'clock on, on Monday, you know what we're giving the patient for pain medication? More train. More train. More train. More train. More train. She's just like in a brain here. She cannot move. She's just like her. And she has a bunch of decubit right here. Look at that. You see? You see? People are literally dying right here in front of us. People have gangrene. There's uh, open wounds here with maggots in them. Um, they're amputating in this hospital back here with flashlights. They're doing surgeries with flashlights because they don't have the generators. This is basically the reality of it right now. They are actually amputating people's legs and they're using Motrin as a painkiller because they have no supplies here. Okay, the supplies are coming in, but they're not getting out. This hospital right now needs supplies, big time. We have trucks gassed up and ready to go to pick up the supplies at the airport right now. The plane has landed and we can't get any type of confirmation uh, from anybody at the airport. So this is what we're trying to work on right now. My name is Louis August. Um, my father is the president of the uh, Association of Médecins et Chants Étrangers, which are a group of Haitian doctors. Right now, people are, are just suffering a lot, a lot of fractures, a lot of compression wounds. You see what you see in there is gangrene. This, because of the gangrene has had so much time to sit in the blood, what you have right now is sepsis, which is a full body in infection of the blood, um, which is what sets in sometimes right now. And it's a very dangerous situation. If people do not get the antibiotics they need soon, then these people are all at risk. Right now, as, as I'm aware of, there are some supplies at the airport, um, supplies we desperately need to get here right now. And um, we're working right now trying to get trucks through kendo.org and uh, making sure that the supplies can get here where they're needed the most. We're tired of the red tape, we're tired of the bullshit, we just want to get things done, get things here where we need them. Perfect case of the left hand not knowing what the right hand is doing. But we're going to get the supplies here. Quickly. Uh, my frustration is the entire NGOs, all the bureaucracy BS that is stopping us from delivering the care that this patient needs right now. Not just here in Port-au-Prince, Leogan, in that parts of the country. And all we have right now is a whole bunch of people laying at the airport for show. We're on our way to the airport right now. We're just going to try to take that's the it? supplies, I that's guess. It, that's it. That's cool. There's really no other option. So we're going to go uh, straight through. We're going to look for a United plane. Okay. Um, I don't know if they're going to be on the tarmac or not. There's, I think CNN's doing live feeds. I believe they were yesterday. Okay. But we're going to look for um, the United plane. So we're going to decide to hoof it because um, there's a bunch of trucks now. The truck backed up, so we can't get our car in. 
So we're actually just going to walk in. So now we're going to go find the United plane. There it is. There's the United plane. So uh, behind me, the United plane looks like they just dropped off. So we're going to go see if we can find the supplies right now. Uh, so right now, all we're waiting for is consignment. And hopefully that ain't going to take too long. The stuff is over here, and if we have to wait more than an hour, we're just going to start loading it by hand. I don't know if we got any consignment, but we're going to grab it anyway and get it to the hospital. Nice looking, good. Yeah. All right. Oh, butterflies. So we got the truck successfully loaded, and we are on our way to General Hospital, where we were just at earlier today. Um, not too much red tape today, I'll tell you that, guys. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we just arrived at the hospital. It's about 7 p.m. What day is it? What day is it? Today's uh shit. What's today? Today. Wednesday. Today is Wednesday, I think. Yeah, Wednesday. Yes, Wednesday. And uh, it's about 7 o'clock at night. We're arriving at the hospital with the supplies. I just want to show you guys that the stuff actually made it here. This woman who's in front of me here is giving birth right now, and we're taping a flashlight to a tree so that they can deliver this baby. Yeah. And you yeah. Here's the, here's the woman right here, and we had to basically go out there find some marines, some people with lights, extra lights, to borrow these people just to function. Can you imagine that? So this is the situation here? This is it. This is, I mean, this is... Uh, no lights, nothing. This is how these guys are working right now. We got a flashlight taped to a tree so they can deliver this baby. So ask yourself, actually, why don't you guys ask the NGOs that you guys keep seeing on the news day in and day out that keep taking all your money, why don't you call them up and ask them where all your money's going? I would like to know where the Red Cross is. I would like to know where UNICEF. I would like to know where Save the Children and, all, and all, among all the rest. It's just it, all it is. It's the NGOs that you guys keep seeing on the news that keep taking all your money. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody on the ground here. I'm just telling you it's the suits back in wherever the hell they are. Um, I tell you right now, obviously it isn't reaching here. Okay, we've been all over the city since we got here. And, and this is the same case scenario everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. You get the picture. Yeah. I want this particular. Yeah.